It's showtime. Uh, it is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020. Uh, I hope that this is broadcasting um, live onto Facebook. Um, I am using a third party service. Um, just trying to bring a little bit more technology and information into my videos. Um, theoretically, I should be able to see your comments. I'm going to try and keep an eye on that. So, um, as with all live things, uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Um, I got a new microphone to try and cut out some of the sound. Um, so uh, I will continue on as though you can hear me. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, here's a comment. Hi, Cassie. So uh, I guess if you cannot hear me, you would be commenting that you couldn't hear me. Uh, so the first change tonight is Amanda had a little bit of an emergency. Uh, so I'm not sure if she's going to be able to make it tonight. Um, but uh, I do have some good news. Hi, Sunshine. Look, I'm seeing your comments. Hooray. Uh, yay. Okay, sound is great. Awesome. I've been trying to kind of upgrade my technology a little bit at a time. Um, so you guys get a better, better quality experience. Um, so I know uh, some of you have probably seen uh, my recent rather scathing review of the Zilla enclosures. Um, they are terrible. Do not buy, especially if you need um, something that's going to be able to handle moisture. I think that that is the issue with Uh, um, but uh, so I'm getting ready tonight. Uh, I come in here, I step into my spider room, and guess who I found? So this was not the uh, spider that I pulled out that I intended to do the video with. Hims is very thirsty right now. Uh, <laughs> he's been out roughing it for a couple of days here in the bug room. Uh, so this is a good time for you guys to really get a good look. Uh, so this is my male high list DR. Let's see here if I can get him to focus a little better. It's weird because it's backwards for me and upside down. I don't know. Um, so he is getting a drink off his paper towel right now. Um, yay. Awesome. Oh, hi. Okay, now I have another comment thread that I'm going to look at down here. More more technology. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit tonight uh, about handling and interacting uh, with not only like pet jumping spiders, but also uh, wild jumping spiders. Um, yes, I am sorry if I'm cutting in, or in and out. Uh, when the screen goes black, uh, it'll just pause for a minute. It's because I have terrible internet uh, that I'm sure I pay way too much money for. Um, so I'll work on, on getting that, uh, situated. So please just bear with me. Uh, if it cuts out, I will come back on as soon as the internet does whatever it's doing. I, I don't know. Um, so I am excited that I get to bring you, bring you guys some kind of hands-on experience. Although this is unexpected, he's actually been helping me get set up. Um, he's been very chill. He's actually glad to see me. Um, so I know that spiders are just bugs, but I really think that this uh, goes to show that you can build a relationship with these animals. I thought there's no way, even if I find him, that I would be able to catch him. And I'll tell you what, uh, he saw me go, there he is, and he turned his head and he looked dead at me. So I do know that there is some intelligence and some connection there with these animals. Now that being said, you know, they are animals. So, uh, you know, of course, handle at your own risk and all the whatever. Um, they are not dangerous. Uh, they're very curious. They're very intelligent. Uh, many of them are outgoing. Um, I feel like these high list males are <laughs> the hardest to handle. I actually have the most difficult time with them, um, especially if you get one that's wild caught because they are really fast and they can jump about two feet. Uh, man, you can feel the power behind their, their. So let's talk about their jumping uh, mechanism just a little bit. Uh, 
So they actually don't have bones and muscles like we do. That's not how they, they work. Uh, they actually uh, use more of a hydraulic system to jump. Uh, so you can kind of feel or see them kind of gearing up and then, and then they'll spring to jump. So uh, that'll also kind of help you predict uh, what the spider is going to do, which is a big part, I feel like, of, of handling and interacting with them um, safely. And we're back. So, um, yes, again, if you're watching this video at a later date, uh, I have terrible internet and I'm doing this live. So bear with me. Uh, there might be uh, some jumps. So um, you can see uh, when they get ready to jump, they'll kind of gear up and you can see them almost kind of calculating that jump in their uh, in their head. So um, that being said, um, you know, I try not to intimidate spiders. If you're uncomfortable, like actually touching them at first, I really recommend if you need to move your pet jumper or a spider, uh, a paintbrush. Uh, this is my, uh, it, it is very similar to cats. <laughs> Someone just pointed out about the cats. Uh, yes, um, you know, obviously you don't want to force your, um, you don't want to force your attention on them. Uh, I, I, I've spent a lot of time uh, building a relationship with this guy. Uh, I make sure that when I go to feed him, I try and hand feed or, you know, to make sure that I'm making contact with him and that he knows that I am his source of food and water. Uh, I think he finally actually came back probably because he was thirsty. Um, he has been just fine. I'm sure off of escaped flies as I am clumsy and I have many um, escaped flies in this room. So I have spent some time building a relationship with this guy. Um, you know, uh, the males tend to be a little bit fast, faster than the females. They're not dragging around, <laughs> you know, a big, a big booty. Um, uh, so we'll just comment they like my shirt. So here's a tip. If you are handling a black spider, um, I would suggest not wearing black. Uh, sometimes I have to think about that uh, on rehousing day and handling all these slings. Uh, you know, uh, try not to wear clothes that are the same color as your spider. Um, I should have pulled my hair up and I meant to, uh, but I had to do uh, an impromptu rescue mission. Um, the long hair, uh, you know, sometimes they might make a jump for it. Um, praying mantises, I've had them actually attack it because, you know, I didn't realize that it that flipped their way. So um, it could be harmful to them um, and you don't want to, you know, get them lost in your hair and get them all tangled. Um, so if you have long hair, definitely um, hold, you know, pull your hair back. Um, it'll, it'll just make it easier for everyone, I feel like. Um, so as you could notice, the, uh, the windows behind me are turning a dark shade of blue because uh, it is dark time here. Um, so most of my spiders are asleep. It's actually uh, been raining for about three days here. So uh, everybody's been kind of tucked away in their hammies anyway. Um, but like I said, I happened to, to get this guy out. So, um, you know, you'll be able to kind of judge uh, really kind of the behavior of the spider and it, its mood and how receptive it's going to be to be handled. Uh, you know, just kind of offer your hand out. Let me see if he's ready to, he has been, he's been very thirsty and I don't want to rush him quite yet because he's still, he's still, uh, I got a, I got a paper towel and I just, I soaked a section of it with water and he, I wish this camera would focus better. I need to find one that's got a good zoom feature for this. He's got his little fangs in here and he is drinking water out of this paper towel. Um, if uh, something else I would recommend is to make sure your hands are really clean. Uh, spiders are sensitive uh, to scents, uh, to chemicals, that kind of things. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the differences in gender here in a minute. Um, I did not get to wash my hands really thoroughly, uh, so I kind of wiped my hands down. Uh, if my hands were really clean, I probably would have just made a little pool of water in my hand and let him drink from that. Uh, but since I had some makeup on my hands, I am uh, giving him uh, some water and a clean paper towel. And I'm just, I'm not really uh, spraying it as much. So I'm just misting it. Let's see here. All right. He's getting a drink. It's so cute. Um, so this is really, really part of the joy. So 
the males, uh, they will tend to be a little bit faster. They're not dragging around, um, usually a big old booty, uh, like your mature females. Um, and, uh, but they're going to be out more and more active. Now, um, the older a spider gets, the more it kind of calms down. Uh, you know, if you're handling them regularly, um, that's, that's going to, um, really help, um, get them used to coming out. Um, and, you know, I will say it, it does also depend a lot on individual personalities. Um, and those of you that own more than one spider can attest to the fact that they do uh, have their own little personalities, even, uh, even within the species. Um, if you are new to jumping spiders, I highly recommend the Carneus. Um, it's one of the species I breed. Um, and I will continue breeding them because I wish someone had told me about them um, when we first when I first started. Uh, they really take well to being handled. Um, some of the Regis, they have what I call the hot lava response. They'll go to step on your hand and they'll jerk back like it's hot lava. Um, so don't get discouraged. Just keep trying. Keep building that relationship. Let them walk on to you. Um, let them get used to the feeling of your skin um, and don't try and force it. And it's really about trust. I mean, we're so much bigger than them. Can you can you imagine how terrified <laughs> it must be uh, to be picked up by a giant? So uh, try and keep some perspective in mind. Um, I'm actually breaking yet another rule here uh, that I really suggest for people um, is keep your focus on the spider. Um, and yes, I'm running a live stream and a video and all this. Uh, this eye I have on the spider and this eye <laughs> I have on the screen um, where I can kind of see them in my peripheral. But really uh, pay attention. They are small, they are quick, and um, you know it only takes a second to lose them and you don't want tragedy to happen, you know, if they happen to fall on the floor. Now, um, I know some people come over from the tarantula community. Um, I have many tarantulas that I do not handle uh, for many reasons. And the biggest reason is that if they take a fall to the floor, then uh, that can be like deadly to them. Their, their, their abdomen can rupture. Um, it's just, it's too much of a risk, I feel like, um, to really handle those, what they call a heavy bodied spider like that. Um, now the jumping spiders are a lot more resilient and more importantly, when they jump, whenever they walk, um, they're actually leaving a line, what we call the butt rope. Um, and that's how I know where this guy has been in here is because I've seen his butt rope trail. So if you're looking for a jumping spider, an escapee, a wild jumping spider, follow the butt rope. If you lose track of your jumping spider, follow the butt rope. Also keep in mind if you're doing hand-to-hand -hand handling, if you pull your other hand back and that butt rope is still attached, you're gonna yank your spider back, okay? If your spider jumps off of your hand, you can reel them in with that butt rope so long as you can reel it in faster than you can, um, you know, then they can drop it. So uh, use the butt rope to your advantage and keep it in mind when you are, um, when you're uh, trying not to lose track of your spider as well. Um, so someone asked if Regis is a good uh, be beginner species. Um, yes, I would, I would definitely put it in probably the top three uh, beginner species. Um, they're really cool, they're colorful. Uh, they're kind of fun to collect since there's so many uh, color variations. Um, it's cool to watch them grow because there are so many changes uh, between molts, especially early on like that, that, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight in star is really a cool, really a cool time. Um, so uh, I do like those. Now the Hylas, uh, they are a lot larger. Let me see if he's done having a drink yet. Man, he is attached to this. I don't know if he's going to come off this paper towel. He's like just latched on poor guy. Uh, but you know what? I left his house open and <laughs> he could have come back at any time. And he did. And this is not the first spider I've had come back. Um, so if you do happen to lose track of your jumping spider, like don't give up hope, uh, know their habits, know what they like, uh, and you, and you will find them. Um, and that, that's also a good tip for finding, finding ones in the wild as well. Um, 
<laughs> I guess I'm just going to leave him on this paper towel here. And um, so another handy thing to have is a catch cup. <laughs> They're my other lights. I have all my lights on a timer uh, because I have a lot of things that I'm taking care of. <laughs> it's cool though. Um, so this is just a little two ounce deli cup, uh, four ounce, whatever. Just have something uh, around in case of emergencies. Um, uh, a catch cup. This is also important to have around uh, if you're doing like rehousing or anything like that. Um, if there's a potential chance. Uh, he has actually escaped before uh, while I was uh, working on his house. Um, and of course, I saw where he went and I was able to recover him pretty much immediately because I had a catch cup handy. So keep a catch cup. Um, a paintbrush, again, is a handy tool just in case they get uh, somewhere that maybe you can't get. Um, if he wasn't so thirsty, he we, he was all over me, guys, <laughs> before I started this video. Um, one thing that I think is really cool about handling spiders um, and other people may not like that you should be aware of is they will leave webbing all over you because uh, of that little butt rope. Um, so if you're handling a spider for a while, you're going to end up with some spider webs on you. Uh, but for me, that's really just an, an extra bonus. So um, let me see here if I can. The lights just went out. I'm going to give him another drink. I could give any more water. Poor guy. He's so thirsty. Don't worry. I am going to get him rehabbed and I'm going to get him in a better enclosure and I'm going to continue my hunt for the perfect highless enclosure. I'm going to set him over here. And the other spider I had pulled out was actually uh, also a highless. Um, a lot of the slings I have right now are in their malt sacks. Um, and, uh, a lot of the Aregis that I have are adult females and they are all, um, on egg sacs right now. So they are not coming out either. <laughs> um, so someone asked me if I have been bitten. Uh, no, thankfully I have not. A lot of that though is probably because, uh, I try and watch for the spider's reactions, um, and their behavior. If you will know if they are not cool with you. Uh, <laughs> they will uh, make a very clear and threatening um, movements and they will show you their little fangs and uh, they will use their entire little body to, to tell you to back up. Um, now that being said, I have heard uh, of people getting bit and it's not even as bad as a bee sting, which uh, you know, I hear, uh, I try not to get stung by those as well. Um, and I'm a big proponent of bees. So that's not to say that I'm anti bee, but, um, you know, I, it's nothing terrible. Um, and does the energy of the spider depend on age? Uh, or does it matter? Uh, actually, yes, it does. Obviously the younger ones tend to be a little bit more energetic. I'm going to talk to you while I try and get her out. She's all curled up in here. I'm cleaning out her enclosure. She's in a little temporary cup. Um, and I like to fold up a paper towel to give them a little hidey. They love the little crevices and stuff to hide, hide in. Um, so the older they get, the kind of more they'll slow down. Um, their golden years is like the best time for handling. Oh baby, I didn't mean to scare you. Um, so Remember that jumping spiders hunt by sight. They're sight animals. So sudden movements can freak them out. Um, so I just moved my hand a little too quickly. I didn't mean to scare this girl right here. She kind of jumped. Let me get her to focus. So this is a female Hylus, DRJ. And this is actually one of my captive breads. Uh, this is one of Hatches' babies which to this day is probably one of my most favorite spiders ever. And she did not crawl onto my hand. She crawled under the paper towel. Of course she did. Woo. And there she goes. And she's jumping. And she's jumping. It's all right, baby. I got her cup right between my legs. She jumped right out on my hand. I'm going to try not to get her too close to the camera. Um, jumping spiders like to go up and jumping spiders like to jump. So keep in mind that range that they can jump and how close you have them to other objects. 
And I know that she's thinking about jumping on this camera right now or this light. She's kind of taking in her in, taking in everything right now. I woke her up for you guys. So um, this is one of my mommies. Actually, I have another generation a second generation of these guys. I'm really excited about It's a project I've been been working on um, <clears throat> for almost two years. So Kylie, I miss you, too. <laughs> um, if they are on egg sacs, how do we care for them? Water spritz? Yes. Uh, so I try and like lightly spritz uh, the nest so uh, mom doesn't have to go far for water and um, I'll try and feed uh, maggots usually um, or something uh, worm like and I'll try and put it right outside the nest so mom doesn't have to go very far. Um, I've actually started putting uh, my egg laying moms in smaller houses um, because I feel like it makes it easier for them. Um, they don't have to go as far to get their food and water and they're pretty much just sitting on that nest um, most of the time anyway, except when they're out looking for something to eat. So I uh, just try and make it make it more convenient for them. She's being so good. She's just sitting here. I'm trying to give you guys a good view. Um, so uh, the Hylas are really awesome. Um, they are not a native species. They are the only non-native species uh, that I keep and breed. Um, I'm trying to uh, get enough people together to breed them domestically. Uh, Patches was an import. Uh, and uh, a wild caught female and I want to get more in the trade. I'm trying to work backwards here. I want to get more in the trade uh, so that we have, you know, captive bred ones in the in the hobby and that we aren't taking these guys out of the wild. Um, oh, she just pooped for everyone. <laughs> um, so oh, these guys are tropical. They're from like Indonesia. She's going to wave. Everybody's over there, honey. So the moms, because <laughs> they have the big booties, are not great jumpers. Oh, I just used that butt rope to pull her up. I guess you guys probably missed it. Uh, she jumped. She fell off my arm, and I just I have a hold of her butt rope in this hand. Let's see if she'll jump. She's trying to find that butt rope. Is what she's doing. As soon as she gets on my hand, she's waking up a little bit. Okay. So what I did was I just wiped the butt rope. Mm -hmm. All right, she's going to be a little bit more active because she's not as thirsty whoop, as that big guy. Now, as long as I can keep her from jumping on the camera, we're good. Whoop, there goes the butt rope. Always use the butt rope, y'all. And I'm sorry, I'm going to try and keep an eye on your questions. Uh, but again, I want to keep an eye on the spider. I can get to your questions later. Uh, look at her wave. She's so cute. Uh, the waving uh, is them, I think, sometimes feeling for their butt rope, uh, feeling for temperature, wind gauge, um, just kind of checking out the atmosphere. Um, also, it's adorable. So adorable. Uh, molting can depend from spider to spider. Uh, it's very individual depending on what molt stage they're in. Uh, so many things. Humidity, temperature, uh, what mood they're in how long they feel like sticking in that malt sack after they malt. Um, so many things. I can't, I can't answer. There's no definitive answer for how long um, a malt on a jumping spider should take. Um, I, <laughs> I keep thinking I'm going to start a group on Facebook that is just like over worried spider parents where everyone that is just worried about their spider not eating or staying in the malt sack too long can come and <laughs> vent their, uh, their worries. Uh, Australia, wondering how different care for jumping spiders. So you guys in Australia have some really cool spiders. Uh, the trick with keeping any spider, I would say, is to find out where it's native to and what its conditions are like. So one of the things that makes these hylas tricky to keep is um, I've been actually keeping them in a terrarium. They need more space than your regular jumping spiders. They like it hot. They like it humid. Um, so these guys really do better in a larger container with heat and humidity, whereas the Carneas are from uh, a desert area. They like it dry, uh, and they're a fid, so they don't need a lot of they don't need a lot of room. Um, her jump is adorable. It's that big booty. It drags them back, so uh, she's not going as far as she's planning to go. Is there a certain way? Uh, so the size for the handling a jumping spider. Uh, I had an escaped Hylas sling earlier. Uh, 
that I caught and handled. Um, yes, she's so precious. Um, but I'm also really comfortable with handling really tiny spiders. And again, you'll notice that I'm just being the ground for her. I'm being there for her support. Oh, yes, she's waving hello. Um, and uh, just to kind of give her a continuous area to walk on, I'm not pushing on her. I'm not shoving on her. Uh, if I did want her to go a certain direction, I would just kind of touch her in the butt. <laughs> um, again, if they're too small, I use the paintbrush. If I'm too worried about accidentally smushing, we don't we don't ever want to accidentally smush. And as human beings, we have that natural instinct to brush things off. So really work with yourself on turning that off. Um, that could be obviously detrimental. I don't know if you guys can see the webs here. How long can jumping spiders live? Um, so anywhere from uh, one to three years, depending on many, many factors. Um, now I will say the Carneus moms, uh, I got them a year ago um, at an expo. I assume they are wild caught. I knew they were all gravid when I saw them. Uh, I bought as many as I could. Uh, I, those adult females, I have three of them now that are still laying eggs a year later. Like they got to my house, they built a nest and they started laying eggs. So I don't know how old they were when I got them, but I've had that, I've had those three adults for over, over a year. So, um, and they're still, they're still going strong. Um, so again, it'll depend on the individual spider. They don't all live that live very long. Um. You know, and it depends on how, how early you get them. I know there's been <clears throat> some issue lately in some of the groups about what's an appropriate size spider um, to, to sell to someone um, or to rehome. Um, and I feel if that appropriate size is when they're big enough to go in an individual cup, which is about four instar. That's the time I separate them um, from group housing to individual condos. And at that point, I feel like they're old enough. Um, they're usually eating Heidi Eye fruit flies by that point. Um, and, you know, so much of their life is spent growing. Uh, don't let don't let age and size deter you. Um, it's they grow really quickly. Um, and the longer you're around them and more comfortable and you watch them and you kind of get to know their little personalities, the more comfortable you'll be handling them. Uh, yes, we will be sharing the recording if you're coming in late. Um, I, I'm working on also getting a YouTube page going and struggling to understand Instagram because I'm over 30. So, <laughs> oh, I hope you all bear with me just like this girl. So this girl I have raised from an egg. And um, as I said, this is one of Patch's babies, a Hylus Diardre. I have raised her from an egg and now she is a mommy on her uh, of her own. So <laughs> now Kirsten's over here wanting to come out. Um, but she has already uh, been bred. So I'm not going to let her play with another male because at that point, I think he's just snack. How do I catch an uh, escape jumping spider? Uh, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, know where to look, know what you're looking for. Watch for that uh, butt rope. Um, there she goes um and have a catch cup ready i actually had a butterfly net he was up on top of the uh, curtain behind me so i had a butterfly net that i keep for escaped flies or just some flies i feel like are good size for certain bugs <laughs> uh, flies don't last long in my house um i'm like oh there she goes <laughs> i love watching them hang sometimes they'll hunt using that butt rope and it's the best um uh, so at least 12 hours of light. Okay, so the humidity should be higher for slings and star. Okay, so let me go back through some of these questions. I know I'm playing with these spiders. Okay, so for the re Regis, the humidity should be higher for slings. So um, the humidity is tricky. I would say uh, watch the humidity even more so with the slings because it doesn't take much for them to drown. And when I first started keeping the Regis, I was keeping them too wet. Um, and I've really had to pull back on that um, and and find that sweet spot. You'll know when it's too dry. Uh, I, was, I was 19. Oh, you're so sweet. Uh, I heard from other keepers that jumpers require at least 12 hours of light. So uh, I often will tell people that these guys are solar powered. Uh, I hear a lot of times I haven't seen my jumping spider in a few days. Uh, my jumping spider won't come out of the hammock. Uh, my jumping spider is not eating. 
Um, so uh, it is dark here, <laughs> so you can't tell. But I am, uh, if you've seen pictures of my spider room, you know that this is a sunroom. So all of my spiders get a good amount of light. Uh, the lights that just switched off here earlier are actually LED lights uh, that I have over my high list tank uh, to add some just some extra brightness without the heat. Oh, there she went again. I took my eye off the spider, y'all. Don't do it. She really wants to get on the camera. And I don't mean like be on film, like be on the camera. <laughs> so uh, oop, uh, in the winter months, especially with the light cutting down, if you have them, uh, if you have them, you know, not around windows, uh, what I would recommend doing is just getting like one of those little metal desk lamps uh, and a 40 watt light bulb uh, and kind of make sure you don't get it too close to the enclosure. Um, you'll know uh, when you have it the right distance because they'll come out on the side and kind of sun themselves. Usually uh, they do like to kind of bask. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily need 12 hours. If you can give them at least four hours, uh, they're good. Um, I have some artificial lighting in here, but again, if there's wild jumping spiders outside that haven't seen the sun hardly at all in the last three days. So it, it happens uh, if you need to go on vacation. Uh, I also highly recommend light timers, uh, which is what I'm going through so I don't have to run home to make sure I have the lights turned off <laughs> in time. Um, okay, uh, lights, smaller varieties. Yes, you. Uh, I had one. I let it, I let it go recently because she was a gravid female, but I had a little tiny native species I found in my kitchen. Um, I was plumping up and I mean, it was like the size of a pencil tip. Again, just make sure you keep those those flat palms um, and you just let the spider crawl on you and you don't accidentally smush. Those are the goals. Those are the goals. No smush. No smush. Um, jumping spider, how long should I leave her alone? Um, that kind of depends on your jumping spider. Um, some of them are very homey. What I mean by that, like they just want to go make a nest and they like will move into a new place and just go right to work and others are more interested in like checking stuff out um i would definitely leave her alone for a couple of hours um or maybe overnight just to kind of get her new boundaries down but uh they're also very curious and they love to explore so uh, i don't think it's going to hurt her either uh, to bring her do jumpers have poison Whoop! there she goes again she really wants that camera guys and i'm all webby I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I love it. It's spooky. They're spooky pets. Um, so poison means that when you eat it, you die. Venomous means when it bites you, you die. So uh, I think what you're probably looking for is are, there, are jumping spiders venomous? Um, no, not to us. Um, uh, the worst you're going to get is a little bit of redness or swelling. Their fangs are super tiny. Um, you know, uh, they, they're, they're not, they're not dangerous. Um, and I wouldn't really classify them as harmful venom to humans. How do you learn not to jump? Um, so Trina asked me how I learned to get over that, 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 uh, brush off that smush, that jump. Um, so I would say I spent a lot of time looking at their little faces. I'm going to try and get her close without her jumping again. Um, and I'm really just focused on her. Uh, and I make sure that I'm in like a calm place. If you're not a calm person, maybe meditate five or 10 minutes before. Um, you know, there's like literally nothing to be afraid of. So, <laughs> uh, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and just, I mean, st like I said, stay calm. Now that being said, I was a bug kid, like hard core. Uh, there, there wasn't a bug that I couldn't catch. So, I mean, I brought home everything. I grew up in Southern Texas. Uh, <laughs> so I brought home everything. Um, so I've spent a lot of time, I guess, handling bugs and creepy crawly things. Uh, so I feel like just having a, an understanding of them and a fascination with them really helps you get over that that fear and that anxiety of the fact that that it's like an eight-legged little kitten with a butt rope. I mean, 
What else do you want? They're webbing. Uh, okay, when a jumper dies, is there any use for the hammock? Do you save hammocks for older jumpers? Um, you know, I believe it was, I think it was Ophelia maybe that posted. Um, and I can't think it kind of went viral um, about saving the old hammies um, for older. It's a great idea. Um, and it doesn't just, um, sometimes uh, some species, these hylas, for instance, they're not big hammy builders. Um, you know, she was raised communally until she was a sub adult. They all shared the same nest. And I think it was because they were all too lazy to build their own. So they all worked on one um, together. So there she is feeling for that butt rope and crawling across it to get to my thumb. Um, so uh, yes, definitely save those hammies. Um, for other spiders, uh, they'll move right into them. Uh, they don't mind recycling, reducing, reusing. Uh, so there's no no harm in saving them um, for older spiders or just uh, even younger spiders um, to reuse. Oh, she's so cute. I, I really hope uh, that this helps you guys get past your fear um, of, of holding these, these guys. It's their jumping that startles you. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Trina, um, you know when they're about to jump. If your eyes are on that spider, you see them calculating. You can see the little equations. Like they have a little thought bubble that comes out with equations <laughs> in their head. And you can see you can see them almost like a cat. They'll crouch down and be ready. Oop, there she goes. And you can you control the jump doing hand over hand. She's going to run up this time. I'm trying to get a good angle so you can see her do a jump because it's super cute because uh, she's so chonky. Um, <laughs> it makes it really awkward. Uh, so just keep one hand in front of them and uh, control the ground that they're on. You're like a human treadmill for them. So it, it is really great exercise for your jumper to hold to pull them out and hold them. Uh, most of them really don't have any kind of aversion to it, uh, especially uh, some of them do do take a little bit more work to get used to you, to get used to being uh, handled and people's skin um, to a new enclosure. But he already has an amazing hammock. Yes. Uh, whoop, there she goes. She's on my keyboard, y'all. It's all right. I got her. Um, so, yes, you can. Um, they do, you know, in the wild, their hammocks will get destroyed all the time. Sometimes I have them just move out and start a new one anyway. Uh, so if you need to, if it needs to go, don't feel too bad. They'll forget about it pretty quickly. Yes, jumpers always do want to go up. They are an arbor arboreal species, which means upsies, upsies, upsies. Hand over hand and upsies. So <clears throat> keep in mind that they do like to go up. Oh, yeah, uh, the small ones, again, uh, so <laughs> I, uh, I've i been slowly losing feeling in my hands for years. Uh, so I can actually watch the spider crawl across my hand and then, like, feel it and then not feel it and then feel it again. Um, so I do probably rely more on sight than I do feeling. So if you're handling small smaller spiders, it's going to be the same way because they do weigh almost nothing. Yeah, you can have. Um, I have not heard anybody taking an abandoned hammock from the wild um, unless it's like on something that you can remove. I would imagine it would be really difficult because those suckers, you know, they build them into crevices and stuff. And it's hard to remove them without destroying them. So usually when people are are reusing hammocks, they're reusing like a toilet paper roll or something that it's been built into. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't mess with a wild hammock because you don't know if it's going to be full or babies until you open it and then it's going to be too late. So I wouldn't mess, mess with a, with a hammock in the, in the wild necessarily. Are any of my adult females currently for sale? Uh, no. Um, at least not in the foreseeable future. I probably will not have um, adult females for sale since I do breed them. The adult females that I have are ones that I've kept uh, to make more of. <laughs> um, 
so I can bring you more spiders. Um, oh, she's getting ready to jump. You see her revving up? There she goes. It's so cute. Let's see, where's she gonna go this time? I wanna not block it. I want you guys to get to see her jump. There she goes. I see the butt rope. <laughs> they put everything into it. Um, so at this time, I'm just selling uh, slings and juvies. Um, now I get to the point where I'm, I'm not selling them all off as juveniles. I might still have some left as an adult. So I'll let you know. Um, maybe I'll eventually get that way. <laughs> but right now, it feels like I constantly have a wait, a wait list. Um, I am going to be out of everything for carne, but uh, except for Carneus um, for a few weeks. But if you are looking for a pet jumper that is easy to handle, I, again, I highly, highly suggest the Carneus. They're they're pretty adept to it, and they're really easy to spot from like across the room if you lose it. So um, I found two. Oh, yeah, they are cool. Um, I'd also be uh, wary of anything you find in the wild like that because of like parasites and stuff, stuff along those lines. I'm trying to pull her up here so she can get her little camera in. When a jump, uh, when do you think you'll have mantids? Um, so I'm actually planning on uh, adding praying mantises like maybe next week. Stay tuned. Uh, I'll let you guys know how, how that's going going i just had uh, about five egg sacks of uh, ghost mantises hatch so i'm feeling pretty confident on shipping those um i will be able to ship jumping spiders year round uh it will be only overnight but i will be able to do it um i've done a lot of research and if i can ship it overnight i can keep it temperature the temperature good um no matter no matter what so uh don't worry we're gonna get you all get you all taken care of no matter what uh, when a jumper dies, uh, so yes, uh, when a jumper dies, uh, they are mostly hard bodied. So like their head and their legs, um, look pretty much the same. Um, I do some preservation work and I've started, I actually take a needle and I empty out their little abdomen and I stuff it with cotton, uh, cause that will kind of shrivel up after they pass away. Um, but you can dry them out to preserve them. Yeah, Sunshine recommends the Carneus too. If you're thinking about a Carneus, ask somebody that has one. They'll, they'll let you know. Um, maybe jumper hunting, the jumper hunting will return later. Maybe. Uh, what is her size? Uh, are you guys talking about this girl right here? She's, she's pretty good size. Um, she's not huge. Um, I don't know. Maybe an inch-ish. Um, the hylus species is amongst the world, uh, the world's largest jumping spiders. Um, occasionally I do, do see some that are extra gigantic. I'm going to put her back in her cup for now. She's getting all crazy. She don't want to go. She's like, no, mm, this is the problem. They never want to go back in. Um, so she is a mature female. And she is, they're, like, they don't really get much bigger than this. You're not going to uh, get a jumping spider <laughs> that's too much bigger than a, than a hylus. There is also the hylus gigantic, gig, gigantus. Okay. I got her in a temporary cup, too, while I clean out her house. I'm trying to round up all those babies out of there. All right. I'm going to set her up here for now. And see what this guy's up to. All right, he's feeling better. All right, here's the male. Boop, 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 boop. You guys get to see all my junk down here. This is my filthy work area. Uh, this is my my indoor office down here. So um, you can tell he almost looks like a completely different species of spider, but this is a male uh, version. He is missing one of his big arms. I don't know what he did. He got all stressed out, I guess, and pulled one out. Um, uh, so he only has one of his big arms, but they have this kind of cool sheen to him and he is kind of skinny. Uh, but again, he went on a, um, on an excursion for a couple of days. So what I'm going to do here is you can see, I'm just, I'm putting my hand out and I'm nudging the booty. He's like, no booty. He is into that paper towel. I'll tell you what, there he goes. See, it was totally his idea. It was his idea the whole time. And that's what we're going to let him think. So 
You can use paintbrush. You can use your finger. Boop. You can tell I moved and it scared Amy jumped. Okay. She's much bigger than the Onyx and Regal for sure. Yes. The Hylus, again, these are big spiders. And um, I, these guys actually kind of chose to come to see you today. Um, I don't normally pull out the Hylus and handle them. Uh, but again, he showed up and um, she was getting her cage clean. So it was convenient. I do not, I'm not aware of the car Carneus uh, crossbreeding with anything in the wild. I'm not aware of anything crossbreeding in the wild. I am aware of some hybrids in the hobby, um, but not in the wild. Although I'm sure it's entirely possible. I know I'm glad I found him too. I have um, three ladies. I actually got this guy from Jan. Um, I have three ladies <laughs> lined up for him him uh so i'm glad he showed up too um he's got he's got some good work to do um and you can see he's gotten a drink and he's moving around a lot better um even though he's only got seven legs <laughs> um i'm sure he smells that female all over me so he's probably probably feeling extra spicy so again, you see, I'm just using the hands over hands. Babies are four eye up. I'm not sure what you're asking me. Which babies? Uh, the carneous babies? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The carne the carneous babies are, are definitely four eye and up. And uh, the carneous babies are big enough to be red. That's what I always tell people because they're a really beautiful color of red. So I don't know. I think as far as jumpers go, that these guys probably have scarier faces than the fits. Um, they definitely don't look anything like the females. You can see his hands. Whoop! He jumped for it. This is why I'm not wearing black, y'all. I saw right where he went, and there he is. They will drop. I noticed the male, especially my first. Isla's male, I called him Geronimo because uh, if I so much as looked at him, he would just die to the bottom of his cage. Uh, for I, uh, so I is for instar. Um, every time a spider or uh, an, um, like a mantis or a bug molts and grows, we call that an instar. So when they actually emerge from the nest, they're already at second instar. Uh, first instar, <laughs> they're like eggs with legs. And then they mold into baby spiders and then they mold again and come out. Um, he does look almost robotic. Uh, they have a very angular <laughs> look to them, the males do. And that's true in several species, uh, especially the ones that are sexually dimorphic. I notice the males are usually black and more angular. I know. I'm glad he came back. Build a relationship with your pets, people. They'll come back. They'll come back. It's possible. They always say in the tarantula group, you can love your spiders all you want. They'll never love you back. And I just don't know if that's true with jumpers. They're just, they're definitely different than, um, than the tarantulas for sure. Yes, he is very metallic looking. He's got like a, a pretty cool sheen. And I really wish I could get a good webcam that could show you more details. Um, because if you were here in person, you could see when he stops and he wiggles his butt a little bit, he's dropping that anchor point. And they'll, they'll drop anchor points every little bit just in case they fall or jump and miss, which is also, um, you know, then they can, they can pull themselves up and redeem themselves. So he's, he's dropping anchor points and you'll see them with their spinnerets or butt fingers. They drop them and they go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that's them making a little anchor point coming up to say hello. He's going to wave his big arm at you guys. <laughs> uh, all right. Do you guys have any more questions on handling jumpers? Uh, I do plan uh, the next video to be on uh, different types of feeders for your jumpers. Again, if I missed your question, uh, shoot me a message and I'll try and get to it. Um, just trying to keep my eye on the spider. He's all feeling, feeling frosty now that he got a, a good long drink. <laughs> he was on that paper towel for like 10 minutes, bless his little heart. I bet he will not run away again. It is very therapeutic, you guys. Um, I know some of you seem really, really uh, freaked out about it. Uh, but I tell you what, you just focus on the spider and you're like in their world. And you have to remember to stay very calm and move very slow. And it is very, very zen handling this.
in. Um, because if you're, if you're freaking out, they're going to be freaking out. So if you're calm, then they're calm. Isn't that right? Yeah. This is Kirsten, by the way. Yeah. Here goes. I'm so glad. Um, again, you can handle any size that you feel comfortable. Uh, you know, um, I would say, uh, especially with the small ones, make sure you have a nice flat surface. Um, you know, there's nowhere that they're going to be able to run and jump and hide and squeeze into, um, you know, uh, make sure the area is clear. As I like to say, I, I tend to lose them on my desk behind me for reasons that you can see why obviously it happens. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and keep a catch cup and a paintbrush handy. Um, so no, no, technically jumping spiders do not require any substrate. Substrate is really, um, mostly an aesthetical, uh, an aesthetic thing. Um, uh, substrate doesn't do anything that paper towels can't do. And I tell you, um, I know it's not the prettiest thing, uh, but I'm a, I'm a paper towel fanatic. Um, they're clean. It's easy to see. Uh, you know, if there's any mold or mildew on it. And if there is, I can check it out. Whereas um, the Hylus, the reason she's in a cup, a temporary cup with a paper towel is because her uh, substrate's all funky and I have to clean it out. Um, so I'm working on getting um, bio set up for them, um, but it's really hard in the smaller enclosures. So I would stick to something that's cheap and easy to replace um, to keep the humidity and give them something to drink off of. Um, how does it feel to have the anchor points? Uh, it's just, it's really light, light. Like if I was to go outside and just pick up a spider web, uh, you don't even really feel them drop the anchor point on you. It just feels like they're like it does when their little foot touches you. <laughs> it's just fun to watch. Um, best spider condo. Uh, yeah, uh, there are a lot of options out there. I'm still working on some different ones. Um, I make them from time to time. Um, but they take me a lot of time and they take a lot of energy and I haven't had the greatest uh, luck sourcing them lately. And I'm looking for something that I'm truly happy with. And as soon as I find it, I will definitely let you guys know. There's a lot of really great DIY options out there too. Uh, if you're crafty at all, uh, get creative with it. There's a few things that you need in a spider house. And as long as you, get like proper ventilation, uh, you know, you're, you're golden. Um, to be honest, I'm raising these praying mantises and uh, these totes I found because they're awesome and they're just the best thing, uh, the best thing for the purpose and they look good and they're stackable and I have a lot of bugs. Uh, so, yep. Uh, yeah, uh, some of the wild caught jumpers can be a little scary. Uh, I had one that was called, what was it called? Uh, it was a, one of the dim the dimorphic jumping spiders. It was a native spider here in Kentucky. Oh my God, that thing was so fast. It would like teleport. I did not handle that one either. Um, you know, uh, some wild spiders though definitely have uh, a curiosity and a willingness to meet with you and be your friend. Why won't you focus? I really want to focus on this little face for you guys. <laughs> there he goes. Um, so hopefully I'll have some Regis. Um, I'll have to do it earlier in the day next time. Uh, the highlights I noticed for some reason just run on a little bit later schedule. They don't come out till like midday. <laughs> So I figured I'd have better luck with them being up. I don't like to keep them up past their bedtime. Look at them look around. So cute. All right. If you guys don't have any more questions for me on handling spiders, I hope you feel more comfortable and confident now. Yes. <laughs> don't worry. They'll calm down. How often should you clean their enclosure? Uh, when you feel like it's dirty, like if it's gross, I'll go in. Um, some of them like to use dead flies or whatever for decorations. Uh, so I'll clean that out, um, you know, after a while. Uh, if it starts looking funky. Uh, and I usually just like mist it with um, 
distilled water and wipe it out with a paper towel, the acrylics. Yes, one spider per condo, uh, for sure. These guys are not, uh, they're not communal. Um, and it's going to be bad times. Um, so uh, now that being said, uh, I highly recommend a spider condo that you can stack so you can get a bunch of them because you're going to end up with a bunch of them anyway because they all have their own little personalities and their own looks. That's right. Smile for the camera, Kirsten. Thank you guys so much <laughs> for tuning in. Um, I really hope uh, that we have brought the world of jumping spiders a little closer. He loves the light. He loves the light. Yes, we will talk about enclosures and and feeders. I want to do more specific videos in the future um, on on these topics because we could spend all day, all day talking about these. So yes, we will talk. We will talk about enclosures, and I'll cover some DIY options for you guys too. We'll cover feeders, and we'll cover all the different kinds of feeders. I also have um, some care sheets. All right, let me get in here and shamelessly plug myself. Okay. He's crawling all the way at my arm. See, guys? Can't take your eyes off of him. See, and if I was wearing black, he'd just be gone. He's trying to get in my hair. Got to keep that hair up. So if you go to my website, um, I do have some basic uh, jumping spider care information there, and it does have some kind of information on what you need on your enclosures. Um, I also have uh, just recently uploaded some care uh, information for uh, feeders, including uh, fruit flies and blue bottle flies. Um, I, I have added our gear and alchemy um, <clears throat> licensed merchandise to the website. I haven't posted pictures yet. And hours ago, uh, but I'm going to friend um, who has some amazing, amazing uh, macro shots of various jumping spiders. Uh, she's taken over the last couple of years um, that we are working to compile a jumping spider calendar. So next year's already looking better. Um, I am going to have some sneak peek shots and that is available for pre-order on my website. Um, for now, I'll let you know how long that's going on. Um, but it's going to be super cool, uh, cause we need a spider a month. I've also included fun, uh, bug and spider holidays on it. So we got this. Yeah, definitely keep an eye out on our website. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions, uh, any ideas, uh, for future videos. Yes. Yes. We're doing pre-orders for those jumping spider calendars and uh, patches is definitely going to be in the calendar. Uh, Rosie, uh, which is another one of like our original spiders that really touched a lot of hearts. Uh, we're definitely going to have her in there. Um, Kelly has some amazing pictures of baby spiders that are just so cute guys. Like I'm having a hard time weeding it down to only 12. <laughs> like they're so good. Um, so we will be releasing some sneak peeks of that. It is available for pre-order. Um, and we will have those, um, sent to everybody by the end of the year. You know, wave to everybody. I'm so glad I found him. I'm so glad you guys tuned in. Um, and I'm going to feed him. He's got a skinny bum, even for a boy. I'm sure uh, he's got, this room is too big for him to hunt in. So remember with enclosures that bigger is not always better. Um, it makes it harder for them to hunt sometimes. Um, he's been kind of in a 10 by 10 room. <laughs> uh, so he could stand a, a good meal. So I'm going to feed him really well. Um, you guys stay tuned and stay spooky. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks.